This is the Logitech G502X+. Plus. The G502 is a legendary but polarising mouse due to its great shape but also for it being a bit of a mess with various flaps, paddles, grooves and gaps. And not forgetting the weight. The X Plus Logitech has made some improvements but how does it compare with one of the best selling mice of all time? I'll be putting the new G502X Plus through its paces as a highly skilled, handsome, good and bold gamer to see if this mouse is worth your hard earned money. Shape-wise, there is no difference between old and new. For those that have somehow dodged ever coming into contact with this mouse, some would describe it as an incredibly comfortable palm grip mouse. I guess it's a comfy sofa for your hand. There are a few differences which mainly concern skin contact and some visual, as the mouse has been decluttered slightly. There are a few grooves and engravings, but not nearly as much as the old versions, meaning there's less dirt traps and it has a cleaner look instead of it looking like a child tried to stick different shapes together. The coating also remains unchanged, so you're still getting a nice smooth matte texture. Regrettably there is still rubber on the sides of the mouse. I understand that someone at Logitech is adamant that rubber equals grippy but to me it equals sticky. There are line engravings on the rubberized section and not triangles like the old version so I guess there's less area for the dirt to build up and might be easier to clean. However because of the dirt build up and because it's quite sticky I still hate it. The weight is also different now. There are no longer any addable weights which means that if you want an extra wrist workout then I suggest that you maybe stick some on. If the extra weight it's been emitted are a deal breaker for you then well unlucky. The weight of this X Plus is 106 grams, the X Light Speed is up to 101 grams and the wired version is 89 grams, which is a significant weight reduction from the 121 gram wired version, overall not as much as changed aesthetically, but there are some changes under the hood and for your wallet which I'll get to later. In terms of the buttons they remain the same on the newer model as well, the mouse 1 and 2, side buttons, extra DPI cycle, sniper button and there's an extra button under the scroll wheel. Now what is pretty neat is that the sniper button is now removable so if you found it annoying you can just swap out the button with a flat version that disables it. A gift to those like myself that got distracted with the boppet like flaps and paddles. Regrettably the ones that I found most annoying the DPI cycle next to the mouse one just got bigger so they are now easier to reach or in my case misclick. These extras still keep the same feeling as the old ones so there's no difference in quality between them which was a pretty decent standard for quality. Now we get to the changes. The scroll wheel on the original G502 was heavy, loose at point and it felt like you had a piece of heavy machinery on your mouse, but you could still do this with some compressed air. You can still do this but it doesn't have the same oomph that the old one had. Dare I say it's become more of a practical scroll wheel, it's now stable, light and more reliable. It is still loud but the old one was too. I guess it doesn't sound like it's going to take off anymore so it's a nice solid improvement over the old version. A new feature for Logitech is their new light force switches which join the optical switch gang. Logitech say that these have the reliability of optical but the feel of mechanical. Basically optical switches get rid of issues like double clicking and input delay. A regular downside of these kinds of switches though is that they don't really have the same crisp feedback as regular switches. What are my thoughts on these switches? They're nice, I like them. I think that they're a bit heavy but they have a great and consistent click. If these were in a new high performance lightweight mouse such as, I don't know, maybe a G703 Superlight, please Logitech bring one out now, I'm desperate for it, I'd be happy with them. In terms of what's under the hood sensor wise, it's the same as the other Logitech mice. It's using their Hero sensor which supports up to 25,000 DPI. Interesting that they haven't bought out a new sensor considering Razer's latest move to have the best one. You also get their light speed wireless technology which basically means that there is no latency from having a wireless mouse anymore. Naturally these days or for those that at least follow gaming mice the wireless capabilities are pretty much equal and on the same level as wired. For battery life these will get you around 120 hours on a charge with no RGB and constant motion but only 37 hours with RGB on. They don't specify what polling rate this is at either which is a personal annoyance when companies give battery life info. If it's 1000 hertz polling rate with no RGB then 120 hours is really good. You may be wondering how is the RGB and why does it use so much battery life? Well there's like eight zones on this one section that you can change and that's it for the RGB, there's no other lights. I went for the worst look I could manage. It can sync with various games as well which is redundant as your hand covers most if not all of the light. It says that it will turn off the lights as well when your hand covers them which hasn't been happening at all. I really do not care about RGB. However the lights do tie into the cost side of things but before we get to that there's one final change. In all G502X models 
models, you get PCFE feet by default. For those that are unaware, these are good. They're super smooth compared to the standard black plastic ones that featured on the old ones. You will notice a difference. They will be buttery smooth. And these differences did take effect in game. This mouse felt a lot nicer to use than the previous G502, which I was not a fan of. It's more manageable weight wise, it's more comfortable to hold without the irritating rubber triangles and because the scroll wheel isn't a massive metal frisbee, the weight balance is improved and it doesn't rattle when playing with it. Finally, taking to the cost of the G502X+, Plus, it is around $160, but let's break this down. You get a high tier sensor, nice switches, great build quality, great wireless performance and a range of features. I'd say it's pushing the limit of what's acceptable, but this mouse is obviously kitted with extra features than the standard. The only thing I don't like is the fact that there's three tiers of the G502X and the only difference between the top two is RGB. It's a bit cheeky from Logitech, you know it's like let's make another version called the X Plus, people will think wow this must be the best version and be really super cool. I think overall this is a more polished version of the G502, there's less excess weight, less visual mess and it seems a bit more sensible. Is it worth getting the Plus? No, I'm saying to you now it is just RGB, it won't change your life, nobody's gonna think you're cool, it might get you more upvotes on Reddit when you post it to that battle station's place but ultimately no one's going to be more likely to date you just save some money and get the g502x low speed i think it is by far the better choice it's more affordable and with the same great features so overall as someone that really wasn't a fan of the original g502 the g502x is a good mouse i personally probably wouldn't use it as my main but i can see now why people would the extra features are pretty decent i have made use of the unlockable scroll wheel more and overall it's been a lot more of an enjoyable experience playing games with. If you're wanting a lighter version of the shape, have I got a video for you which will show up now.